There's a green quality gun you can get in the first dungeon with a lot of chaos damage on it. Not best for your setup, but one of the best pistols I've seen. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for it. If it's good, I'll absolutely use it. I'm assuming it will be. Better than what I've got. Stashed. Okay, stash all of those. I don't actually know if I'm supposed to hold on to the scrap. I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll do so. What is it used for? Nope, oh, it's just used for whatever. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Ah, blueprint unlock. Slightly harder, but yeah. There's a fire in your eyes and blood on your clothes. Did you put those tainted men down? Tell me, how did it feel? Vindicate regret these people once lived. And paying for lecture and conscience. Those things are abominations. Abominations that killed my wife, Annabelle, and turned me into a cripple. The only way I can get back at them now is paying someone like you. So if you want more iron, skip the morals and kill some more dead. Here's your pay. Thanks. For the scores of the Shamblin dead, but I think you can do better. The Aether Corruption created some truly monstrous m mutations in the dead. I heard tales from the Burwitch survivors that witnessed a horrifying transformation with their own eyes. Balros and Hagra. The A was fine folk. Ran the boarding house up in Burwitch. That was until the Aether got them. Turn them into things that uh, things you used to only see in nightmares. Those that got away spoke of bloated flesh and blades of bone. Can't even imagine it. Word is they chased the survivors as far as the moldering hills into the south of Burwich. Go out there and hunt some da hunt th hunt some down. Tell me of the slaughter. I'll make it worth your while. I've already dealt with them. Tell me what was the battle like? Gruesome and bloody, just the way I like it. Hope they suffered. Nobody deserves to be torn apart by monsters like that. But there's a few less in the world, thanks to you. Here, take the iron. Thank you. Did what had to be done. Yeah, I had no more quests from him. I don't think we have any other quests in the area. Perfect. Back we go. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna just finish this area, because it's just Burwitch and then we're done. So that's nice. You, uh... If you've already done it, it actually doesn't force you to do it again. A lot of quests don't do that, and it's like, go back out there, and I'm like, I don't really want to. That's how I just skip quests entirely, and that's bad. Bad-ish. Okay. Ooh, I am getting hungry. That's good, though. I gotta get rid of some more food. I'm trying to specifically, uh... Oh, what's this? Dangerous domain. Toughened. Monsters have more health, less health regen. I guess that's fine. Probably fine. Hello! Uh, wait. What the hell? Why the hell is he level 20? Oh, sweet Jesse. Jesse. Why is this guy hard? Well, bailing, I guess. We'll come back to him later. Uh, let's see if I remember. I'm gonna just pop my portal next to it. I'm probably gonna forget. Uh, let's see. That also does scale up a little bit. So the blueprint witch stalker. Cool. Well, let's hope the rest of this area isn't super overtuned like that. No, most of these guys are level 14 like me. I do not know why that guy was beefed up. Where am I? Where am I going? Well, this seems like it's considerably less problematic. And yeah. Back to that topic about uh, Path of Exile versus Grim Dawn. I really am feeling a lot more, like, immediately attached to what I'm doing here. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that there is heavy synchronicity between some of the perks that I'm picking up and the, the traits. Um, that I just wasn't feeling in uh, Torchlight nearly as much. Also, the, f the freaking... Uh, 
Molotov cocktail is actually really satisfying. Like, I don't... I think a long time ago, I was always super dismissive of damage over time effects, and I think I still am in a lot of games just because it's like, you know, what's the point? If I can one-shot or two-shot something, a damage over time effect isn't really going to make too much of a difference. Um... But this is, this is definitely one of those situations where I'm like, yeah, okay, this is actually pretty good. Oh, what's the point of this? Yes, stand there. Stand in the fires. Oh, there's actually more to this place. That's what. I was like, uh, we just went in a big loot and there, loop and there's no, no special thing here. We are good. I don't know which ability it is that does the spinny thing. I'm assuming that's retaliatory damage, but it's super good. I love the idea of damage over time effects, curses, etc. They're often just made wildly inferior. The problem is a lot of developers just straight up don't know how to uh, how to develop for um, for th these things. It's super common in RPGs. Uh, to specifically have enemies that are immune to poison or immune to, like, all damage over time effects or something like that. It's very rare to be able to say poison up boss in a Final Fantasy game. And if you do, it barely does any damage compared to just wailing on them. The heck? Alright. There's some kind of area over there, but I don't think I can get to it. Maybe it's just locked off for whatever reason. But yeah, damage over time should do more damage, but over time. So it's kind of the trade-off of, like, fast, slow, bunch of other things. Um, but I I just, I don't know. I, I have weird beefs with how game developers handle it, because it can either be so strong that it's, like, impossible to deal with, or so weak that, like, why bother? Uh, so earlier we were talking about... Uh, Divinity Original Sin. And that is one of those games where status effects and damage over time effects especially really uh, play nasty with the enemies that you're fighting. And I love it. It's so good. Dang. There's a lot of dudes here. They do not want me getting in. Let's see. Whoops. I should probably actually use a healing potion. There's one guy just left here. Yeah, one of my... Jeez. Not exactly in the same vein. One of my absolutely m most disappointing, like, encounters with damage over time effects versus, like, you know, regular gameplay. Oh, we've got another one of these, like, weird pseudo-rocks. Oh, strange. Uh, let's see. But I really liked World of Final Fantasy a couple of years ago. That was, that was st still one of my favorite, like, monster collection games I've ever played. And, nah. Uh, well, I'll be a living person. Oh. Give me a second. Give her the spiders first. Well, I'll be a living person. I've been stranded out here since Burwich fell. Fortified myself out on this little patch of islands, cooking whatever critters got too close while waiting for the inevitable end. Oh, welcome sight for sore eyes. Burwich fell months ago. How have you survived this long? Well, I can cook for one. I used to work in the capital and had the honor of preparing meals for a couple of noble houses and many foreign dignitaries. I'm not a fighter, but I learned to hunt a bit when necessary. It gets me by scraps of bone... Rats aren't exactly fine dining, though, most of all. I just keep quiet and observe. What about you? Tell me, where do you ha hail from? We could use a cook. This person of yours, prison of yours sounds like a real heaven compared to my current dwelling. I bet I could do my share as well and fight better on full stomachs. How will we get all my equipment to Devil's Crossing? Riftgate. 
A portal. I've only ever seen one of those before, and it wasn't spitting out the good guys. I really hope you're not trying to pull one on me. Oh, well, here goes nothing. Ooh, the music got real good right about now. I wonder if there's just, like, damage auras, or, like, a AoE damage over time effect in this one. The Phoenix Point, where acid is garbage in the hands of the player. I really wanted to like Phoenix Point, and I just couldn't. There was just multiple things in that game that just made me mad. Which is such a shame, because it had a lot of promise. I've heard with mods and a couple other things it's gotten a lot better. That and MechWarrior 5. It's hard to go back to. Let's see, if... You and your crew decide to go back to an MMO. Uh, let's see, might I point you at one? Uh, let's see, it's Final Fantasy XIV. I played that, uh, actually for Christmas. Uh, I didn't stream it, but I was playing it on my own. I found the game to be charming, but boring. Um, I think my problem is I've bounced off of a lot of MMOs lately, and it's hard for me to get back. There's just, a, there's just a certain something that I feel like a lot of MMOs lack nowadays, and it's... It's just been very difficult for me to um, get into them in the same way. I really liked the fact that you could switch classes and the combat system seemed kind of neat. I just hated that most of the quests were kind of just meaningless, like go out and kill people. I I much prefer this kind of gameplay, actually, weirdly enough, um, where you're not told to go kill X. You're told to kill a couple of specific people with like light justification, but that's about it. Um, but what that does is it it makes me as a player, yeah, sure, I'm just mowing through mobs, but that's where the EXP is and the gear. Um, and it saves the actual, like, effort or interest for the interesting things, even if it's so much as just like, go oh, kill my neighbors, they're zombies now. Um, I know this is, like, it's a very weird and thin line, honestly. Um, but it's an important line for me, at least, where... If, uh, if I'm playing a game and it's like, I need you to go kill, like, so-and-so because, like, really in-depth reasons. And I'm just like, I, boy, howdy. You're just trying to justify, go kill, go get, uh, five Gortusk li livers for me again. I know your tricks, game. Just let me go out and kill Gortusks and then make the livers worth some extra money or... You know, give me the quest after the fact, or like, you've collected Gortusk livers, now you gain some XP. Congrats, you've done the thing. Um. So I think I would have much preferred that game if it was just kind of like a slow, hand developed dungeon crawl slash like world adventure. Don't, you know, no, no flimsy reasons to do anything, and then saved all of the, uh, Saved all of the really interesting stuff, uh, you know, all the writing and whatnot, for, like, a very small handful of quests that really, like, pushed some kind of story along, either for the local area or elsewhere, because for me, that makes everything so much more interesting. So I might try it again at some point, because I know it's also one of those where you really, really have to get through uh, Realm Reborn before you get to the good stuff, but the problem is, like, I, I at max have, like, maybe 10 hours of free time a week? Eh, maybe more. It kind of depends a little bit. Um... But it's hard to play most MMOs for that. I guess I was actually talking about Final Fantasy XIV earlier today. I was watching somebody fish in that game, and I was just like, oh, boy. I think that level of variety of things to do within an MMO can work really well. If you've got, like, a group of friends that are all kind of doing it together. Um, but even beyond that, like... You really have to have no, no other games to play simultaneously. And that, for me, is the hard part of any game that takes longer than 15, 20 hours to play is usually, uh, usually makes me itchy because at that point, I'm already, uh, I'm already moved on to like two, three more games.
I think if we were to play an MMO sooner than later, we'd probably play through Tor. Um, not necessarily because it's a particularly good MMO, be but because it focuses really hard on storytelling, and that was something that Shell really liked. I don't know if I'd stream that, though, or if I'd just play it. Because it was definitely one of those games that, like, I don't know. I, I think just in general, MMOs are getting harder for me to specifically be interested in recording. Because you have to be on for so long. And, like, with this game, for example, yeah, sure, I'm kind of talking about nothing. But there are moments where I actually have to, like, try or, like, a change of pace. Or even just, like, a little bit of plot that, like, really gets me going. Uh, that sounded weird, but whatever. Um, but otherwise, I kind of treat this as, like, this de facto podcast time, which I think is good. Um, but, like, how long is Grim Dawn? 20 hours? Maybe a little bit more? Like, after you're kind of done with that, like, most MMOs, 20 hours, you've barely scratched the surface. Most non-MMOs, you're usually done. Um, and that's that's kind of the issue that, that I stumble up upon. There's supposedly a, uh, a checkpoint out here somewhere. We're also looking for the, uh, we're looking for and not finding the, uh, the smith. Went to the northeast. Oh, I went to the northwest. That would probably explain a lot of things. But no, I, I absolutely understand how people like MMOs. I think the other problem I, I get stuck on is just the repetition if you want to actually, like, get anywhere in the endgame. Um, like, I did a stint with Destiny 2 uh, a couple months ago, and I really enjoyed the experience. I thought Destiny 2 was actually probably one of the better modern MMOs I'd played, just because you can get through the story mode and to max level in, like, no time at all. And then after that, it's just like, you want dungeons, you want raids, you want PvP, you want just, like, mindless grinding? We got it all. And so I, I actually got really big into that for at least a decent amount of time. Eventually kind of lost lost interest just because, like, the raids were just hard enough that we weren't beating them. And I wasn't having as much fun anymore. Um, it was also one of those where it's like, let's do the same raid uh, every couple of days and it's like yeah cool whereas like conversely I can get just about the same experience say playing uh deep rock galactic um but i don't have to feel like i'm i'm grinding content yeah you play europa universalis four and 20 hours is like half a run yeah see un unfortunately uh <laughs> I, I'm just going to collectively blame um, everyone for this. Uh, just in terms of, like, my job has forced me to like short games more. Because I know when I was younger, I used to be really big on the long RPGs with, the, like, really complicated plots and the, you know, long strategy games and Civ and... Jeez, uh, what other... I mean, I played a lot of WoW. Um... But if I were to do any of that stuff nowadays, I'd kill my channel right quick. I'm sure I'd be able to keep, like, a number of people around, but the... Uh, let's see. One, one genre, one... Oh, I have reached Despised with Beasts. Can you actually have a positive status with Beasts? Okay, so Burwich Bridge requires dynamite. We don't have that. Good level up, though. Uh, let's see. Okay, we should probably go back to investing into this Molotov cocktail. As it is probably my best AoE I've got right now. Demolitionist. So, I could also electrocute.
no, that's Fire Strike. There's this. Um. Let's just max out Blackwater Cocktail's base form, I think. But yeah, if, if your job depended on liking something or not liking something, uh, you would probably change at least somewhat. I try to mix. I try and play things that, like, I like, that I know people will enjoy, or, like, try and time things well. So, for example, I'm playing this largely because I've got a number of people that are probably currently interested in watching uh, more Diablo-likes post Volson, And so I figure, yeah, I can just roll from that, that series into this one, hopefully. Uh, obviously, caveat is, <laughs> it's a very real possibility I might end up stupid busy and it's just like, eh, never mind. But, you never know. Worst comes to worst, I just have fun for a little while, then, then I go back to, uh, just n nothing but indie games. There's so many indie games. Where the hell is this blacksmith? Yeah, he's in Burwich outskirts, so he's, oh, he's around here somewhere. And that got big. And dangerous. Hell yeah, Molotovs. But now, some, someday I'd like to play, like, a, a right proper MMO again and, like, really sink my teeth into it. It's just... I don't know. Honestly, uh, frustratingly, one way or another, it... The most likely MMO for, that I'm going to play again is probably going to be... I mean, apart from, like, maybe loading up Tor just for a little while. Uh, the Portland friends that I know uh, rather like World of Warcraft. So chances are I'm probably going to pick up the new expansion. I get Shell likes it too, but there's that. I guess a Molotov's the wrong dude. I think this game makes you want to revisit Titan Quest, but they don't have Ragnarok on PS4. Or Atlantis? Because Atlantis is the newest newest one they added. I'm actually surprised they, they are still updating it, but... I can pause the game. I had no idea I could pause this game. Weird. Move along now, stranger. Greetings, stranger. I hope you're out here fighting the good fight. Here for the Malium men here. What do you know about that? Duncan needs it to help the refugees. He's a talented boy, that one. The way he weaves magical properties into his craft astounds even me sometimes. I prefer a finely honed blade and a solid shield to that nonsense, though. Duncan was my fir f finest apprentice, but he still needs to learn some priorities. He those people he's trying to help can't help themselves. Our knowledge is a rare gift. We can't squander it on those who refuse to fight for Karen. I have a group in Devil's Crossing. You could join us. Devil's Crossing, eh? You certainly seem to be a capable sort. So the rest of your group is anything like you. Well, humanity might just stand a chance. Very well, I'll be your armorer. Today we'll strike back against the evil and uh, against the invaders and retake Karen for humanity. What do you guys think? Engram or his uh Engram or is an apprentice? What are the differences? So, pierce resistance, armor protection, f physique.
Is there no way to not kill this guy and still get his... Okay, so what's Duncan have? Well, I'm feeling Duncan. Second thought is time the hammer was passed on. It's true, Duncan brings a fresher approach to the forge with his arcane weapons, and he goes on about his work with goes about his work with unrivaled energy, but he still lacks the experience to make weapons for real soldiers and masters of the blade. Not have the power of Malium men here, wasting away when we're at war. I will see that his work benefits humanity. You'd put him to work, eh? You certainly seem like a capable sort. Uh, very well, Duncan will inherit the Malum men here. Take it to him. Let's let him do his charity work, but after that... Thank you. You know, we'll do great things. Hey! So I didn't have to kill the guy. Let's see, you're waiting on Crowfall. I... I was getting emails about Crow, Crowfall for ages. I think they've stopped at this point. You want to give me a breakdown about what what makes Crowfall special? Because I actually have no idea. I more or less just ignore every spam email I get, even if it's not actually spam. Dang. I look like... I look like I belong in, um... Mad Max. You're back. Do you have the million men here? Persuaded Angram to part with it. Here you go. I'm impressed. Angram's a tough man to convince of anything, but I'm glad he didn't have to come to the blows. Thank you. I'll do much good with this. So you'll join me in Devil's Crossing? Yes, of course. First, I must complete my work here. Now that I have my master's forging hammer, I'll be able to provide these people with quality equipment. See you in Devil's Crossing when I'm finished. Promise. Yeah, so we're missing the foggy bank. Unless the foggy bank is over here. Which portal is this? So foggy bank's probably this thing over to the right. I'm going to go check it out quick, even if it's not a good idea. Or even if it's a bit of a waste. Oh, hi. Free item. Currently at a loss of things to play till Neo 2 and Doom Eternal come out. Trying to find which one I will play first. Uh, hmm. That's a always a bit of a, a tough question. My general opinion is probably find something quick to play. Uh, I mean, that's generally what I do. I got a lot of quick games to play. That lightning looks really co freaking cool. Nether crown, that's a new one. Bloodsworn Agilent. Huh. Void Sween. Uh, Void Spawn. So this must be some kind of like culty encampment. Oh. I mean, honestly, easy answer would be just go replay, uh. Just go replay Doom Eternal. Or not Doom Eternal, just play Doom 2016. Um, if I had more free time, I would actually probably do that myself. I really like Doom 2016. I thought that was a fantastic game. Okay, what is this? Iron door. Can't box. open that. Oh. Probably how you get to the fog bank. Did that yesterday. Damn. That game took me at least a couple of days to play through. But then again, I was mixing it with a lot of other YouTube comment content. I actually don't have a very good sense of how long it takes to finish some of the games I play. Because for me, it takes a while. Um, Because, yeah, I only play games in about three to four hour chunks, give or take. You have nothing going on on the weekends. Yeah, that would explain it. I, uh... I don't really have weekends. I'd like to get weekends back somehow, but I don't really know how I would do it. I mean, I could just stop streaming, but 
That's not exactly a good business decision. I'm... I'm tentatively looking forward to Neo 2. I just... I think I might play that on PC when it comes up there instead. Free up my schedule a little bit and not... Uh, not try and force myself to play it on a subpar platform. Mainly because... Uh, I really don't want to go through that loot grind again. Uh, I, I remember, like, the later on you went to Neo, the more you had to worry about, like, what gear you are using. And that got kind of frustrating. Oh, here we go. No? Oh, Just crawled out the window and into the cellar. Well, that works for me. Uh, let's see. I've purchased this game already. I haven't tried it yet. Do you think it's worth it? 100%. It... It is one of the best Diablo likes out there. Uh, obviously, I'm sure a bunch of like Path of Exile purists will probably say the Path of Exile is probably the better one. Uh, but I find Grim Dawn to be uniquely charming. It's all hand design stuff. I think no, Path of Exile is definitely procedurally generated, at least at some degree. Uh, but it's all hand design. It's got some really neat build variety without having to worry about the giants skill tree. It's much more, like, linear and easy to go through. And, uh, I don't know. It's just a solid, it's a solid Diablo. Like, that's, that's really the only answer I would give. But if you got the time to devote to it, it's worth it. Ooh, he's a punchy bugger. Oh, let's see, how am I doing? I'm doing good. Probably don't stand in the poison, but I want the stuff. And also, pants? No. Dang it. Uh, let's see, are these better? No, I think I like the other ones better. The other ones have retaliation, also frostburn damage, and some other things. What is this? Nether crown. Wow. Player level 24. Woo! I guess I'm gonna just hold on to that, I guess. Anyway, yeah, give it a try. Have fun! And don't think too hard about, like, what you specifically, uh, pick build-wise. Uh, most things work together actually surprisingly well. I'm enjoying Demolitionist, uh, crossed with, uh, Inquisitor. But if you want to go, like, Minion Master, I've heard that's pretty good nowadays and some other things. I don't really know. 